Hello, right back. This is Jay Plays Games. Welcome to the Access Show, an in depth look at the world of early access games. Today, we're taking a look at Ark Survival Evolved and their decisions regarding servers and what happens when the game officially releases on the 29th of August. So, for those who don't know, there are two actual types of servers going to be in Ark Survival Evolved. And when I say servers, I mean actual networks. Currently, all the servers that everyone plays on in early access will soon be called legacy servers these servers you can transfer between if they're enabled so you can transfer pvp to pvp pve to pve etc etc these legacy servers you will not be able to transfer any of your characters dinosaurs or items to the fresh servers that will be launching on the 29th of august when the game officially launches so when you start on the fresh server with a brand new character once you build up enough, you can certainly then go and transfer to another fresh server with your character, with your dino, with your items. So this is probably not news to most of you. It's been over a month now since Art Survival Evolved broke news that they were actually going to change their mind over what they were doing with the servers. I had predicted for many, many months that they would actually do a full wipe of all early access servers, otherwise known again as legacy servers. And that's exactly what Wildcard were going to do and Jeremy Stieglitz, the creator, they were going to implement a server-wide wipe. In fact, they was going to do it barely three weeks before the actual official launch of the game. Of course, the game then got pushed back till the end of the month and during this period, they actually changed their mind only a day later. After doing lots of interviews, particularly with PC Gamer and other outlets ran with the story, Jeremy Stieglitz clarified exactly what was supposed to be going on. He went on to say they would take about 10% of the servers down and they would recycle them into the fresh servers. Basically, any servers that were low on activity, low on people playing them, would then actually be wiped and ready for the brand new servers. He went on to say they'll do that on a regular basis going forward, and he says that may be no servers at some point if all the servers have people on them. And if within a few period of a few weeks those servers have people on them, that's what we consider an active server. This is something we communicated to the player base from day one. We discussed wipe versus no wipe plans. We said that servers have no that have no player population may be marked for obsolete. And that is actually true. They did stress that. However, he does go to say in this actual article, actually, if there's even one or two people playing on it in a month's time frame, it's not our intention to take that down. We'll be making these terminations in six month intervals, so there'll be some time. We have around 400 PVP legacy server sessions, and we're probably going to have around 200 new servers for this for the foreseeable future. Even then, the majority of our players would stay on legacy servers because that's where their homes are, so to speak. So that's okay because we'll have a lot of new players coming in the door as we get to launch and beyond. We think there'll be a plenty to go around so far as player population, but there won't be as many new servers as old servers. So I'm going to pick some holes apart in lots of these statements and lots of these things that Wildcard have said as well as Jeremy Stieglitz. But let's make sure we're clear on their initial plans. As it stands right now, they are going to be taking 33% of the existing online servers off and recycling them as brand new servers. That's a hell of a lot more than a 10%. Jeremy stated in his PC interview here, PC game interview, as well as the state of the game actual forum post the community team put out on that day clarifying a few bits more from the interviews and their forward plans. And straight away, even in that first post, they contradicted what Jeremy said and said every three months we'll be taking a review of the legacy servers. So that's already dropped down from six to three, and now they've already gone from 10% to 33%. So what does 33% actually look like? Well, the server list is here. So if you play on official servers, you need to go and check these three lists right now. When you take a look at the PC one, you can quickly go through it all. And you'll realize that Scorched Earth is probably the most biggest casualty out of every server. No matter what console or platform it's on, Scorched Earth servers are the most that are getting reduced or cut off. On average, on every single platform, I've got some of my rat bags, including Little Legs. Big shout out to him to do some research for me. And out of about 1,100 servers on each platform, 300 of them are being removed. So you can see where they've got their 33% of the servers are being removed. So again, why have they done that? How can you say you're only going to remove 10% and then jump it up to 33%? 
specifically how can you do that without no proper in-depth explanation there's no detail in exactly why these were taken off what was the criteria for the actual servers being empty because according to Jeremy they're not going to take servers down even if there's a few people playing on it but I can't see how all them servers all of them servers don't have any activity now I'm not that bothered about servers being repurposed I actually advocated all servers should be wiped because I thought it was the most common sense thing to do if you look at any other early access game when it comes out of early access they usually wipe the slate clean and even some people's single player games don't necessarily make it if you've played on official servers for the last two months you'll know it's not been any fun at all with all the duping and the mass dosing of attacks that were happening on Xbox and PS4 particularly on console it's been a real shit show the legacy or the early access servers become a hotbed filled with DDoSers and people that were duping now Wildcard let this go on their excuse was that they were getting the game ready for certification and that they were all too busy to go and deal with the problems that had built up over the period of a few weeks going forward Arc are supposedly introducing a brand new DDoS security measure so that the brand new fresh servers will not be affected by the same sort of problems that the legacy servers have had now I don't play on official servers but I know plenty of people do and I know plenty of my subscribers do if you're playing on them servers legitimately you're going to be angry because what you're going to be left with is still a lot of duped items and duped tribes that became big because of the way they were duping and cheating now this is where it gets even more fucked up there is going to be no support for these servers going forward now when we talk about support I'm talking about if there's a problem or an issue on an actual server so if you do find someone's been duping if you do find someone's actually been DDoSing as well as other issues like dinosaurs glitching through the map this was something their customer service team dealt with on a daily basis and they would help and repair as many of the issues as they could and while they were slow on the most part because there wasn't that many of them it was still a service that was fantastic for a game like Ark to actually provide but they have decided they will not do this on any legacy servers going forward any support you will get is if you're on a fresh new server they're basically wiping all the servers in a slow process they may not have done it all in one day but over the length of six months you can bet they will wipe out another thousand servers so it's not going to take that many more months before they decide that some of them are ghost towns and they'll keep removing them and in this process they'll reduce the servers they've got running so it reduce the cost of how much they're paying for them this idea that they're keeping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of servers running is is true technically but not for long because people don't want to play on servers where they don't get a any help or support b any way of removing all the cheating that has gone on in them servers yes there will be a small population of people that will carry on playing they'll think themselves hardcore they'll think themselves as the true early access players and for many of them they probably have never cheated in their lives and they're the ones that are probably going to get affected the most you never cheated but a you can't transfer or take any of your new creatures items or your characters over to the brand new servers b you're stuck on servers filled with dupers c you're not getting any support if anything actually legitimately happens to you wildcard have basically just said fuck you and d there's absolutely no guarantee that your servers will not be shut down because their process of choosing which servers to open and shut down or close in the future is not transparent at all and it seems like they're already making decisions against what they've already previously stated now this is something new in wildcards frequently they do this and i can understand that that is something that comes with early access so things you say at the beginning of early access can quickly change i've no problem with that i've got no problem if they decide to wipe out 33 percent of the servers i've got no problem if they want to say that is going to be an issue and we just can't get rid of the duping because that was their excuse the duping was so widespread they could not actually go around physically and wipe the tribes that were using duped items if the server population is that filled with dupers and cheaters then you have to fucking wipe the whole network I'm not saying every single server majority that it's mostly pvp that is the most affected by troopers but there are still lots of it that goes on on pve so the most of the art community right now feel absolutely betrayed that they have been lied to 
they're being forced to actually move servers because in the long run there won't be anyone playing on these old legacy servers and they're being told it's basically their fault because of all the duping that went on and that may be the case but wildcard have to grow some fucking balls and just wipe all the servers there is no point in keeping this slow, slow, drawn out purpose for recycling these servers and pretending it's all just hunky dory. Mark my words, in six months time there will be only a handful of legacy servers left. I would say most of the big tribes, and I've got this on good authority from good friends that play in them, are moving to the brand new servers anyway. They're confident in their abilities to rise up and become alpha on whatever PvP tribe it is. So you may think, well, shut up, Jay. That's not a problem then. We've got new servers. Just go and play on a new server. You don't have to worry about what happens on the old servers. But it's the way that it, as ever, it's the way it gets communicated that pisses me the fuck off. It's never the fact that something's late or something's changing or something's gone wrong. It's the way they actually tell people that I have the biggest issue with Wildcard. And it's one of the things that makes me really not rate them as highly as I should. Ark is a fantastic game, it's done fantastic things for me for my channel. But I'm never going to stop actually pulling them up when I think they've done something wrong. And they have done something massively wrong with this. This was totally the wrong decision for them to make. They've actually just caused a long drawn out process. If they'd actually just said they was going to wipe all the servers in the first place and stuck to their guns, they would have actually had a better turnaround. People can respect the issues that went on, they can say there were problems, and they can say that Wildcard fixed them quickly. There is no guarantee that their new DDoS mitigation service they're going to be running will actually fix any duping or DDoSing that goes on on the fresh new servers. They are applying that brand new mitigation to the legacy servers. So legacy servers will still get content, they will still get updates, they will still get all of that stuff. You will still be able to transfer between legacy servers. And like I said, you will hopefully get this new anti-DDoS effect or anti-DDoS security system. But it's too fucking late. They purposely, in my eyes, allowed it to go on for too long. There was not enough excuse to say it was in certification. They put the game in gold way too late in the process. So what they should have been doing is having the game finished by now, months ago. And they should be working on the DLC which would have been Scorched Earth. But none of that came to be because they just can't seem to fucking run the show properly. They can make a great game, glitchy, buggy as it is, it is a fantastic game, one of the best games I've ever played. But the way they do their business is just completely fucking backward. The people that duped are usually part of big massive tribes are already thinking about their brand new life on the brand new servers. So this doesn't affect them, they won't give a fuck. So the people that stay on them servers that aren't cheating are going to just get keep getting roasted by all the cheaters and all the dupers. And there's nothing going to be done about it. There'll be no way to report it. There'll be no consequences done. No one's going to be taking care of the actual tribes like they used to and delete their bases and delete their tribes and kill their teams. It's going to be complete wild west. Now to some of you that might actually appeal and you might be thinking, well, yeah, that sounds like my cup of tea. But I think for the vast majority of people, particularly who haven't cheated or duped, it's a really bit of pill to swallow. And while nothing lasts forever, if a company says they're not going to wipe your servers, which they did state before Christmas, they then change their mind and they actually go in to wipe out every server only two or three weeks before release until again they change their mind. You have to worry about where they're coming from and what they plan for the future. So what can they do differently? I think they could do something like allow transfer characters. I think that would go some way to helping the people. They'll particularly want to be trying out the brand new Ragnarok map. Now the Ragnarok map is available on the Legacy Network and the actual brand new server network. But again the Legacy Network is going to just taint the Ragnarok maps because people will carry on bringing their dupe items, their dupe dinos onto the actual Ragnarok servers. So they may be a fresh map, but all the same problems are still going to exist on the legacy servers. So I generally think, as in terms of another solution, think they should not allow any transfers to Ragnarok, other than maybe character again, which is something I think they can do quite easily. In this way, it gives people the opportunity to start out hard, quickly and fast, and anyone who's already got the items ready. 
but they're not going to do that. So they may offer a handful, you know, well, more than a handful, a few hundred Ragnarok new servers, but it's just not going to be the same experience as playing on a new server. If you want to be a PvP king, you might as well play on the fresh new servers. You've got more chance of rising up than you do on servers filled with alpha tribes going around with duped items. If you take a look at some of the latest forums where people discussing it, there is not one single person that agrees with what they've been doing. From people saying they've stuck their middle finger up at every player who's been loyal to the game, to people agreeing that it's just going to cause them problems in the long run. I'm going to leave the links for all three lists on PC, Xbox and the PS4 down below. Make sure obviously that you, when you're transferring to a server it's not going to be one of the servers that is on the kill list. And remember you've only got to the 29th 12am Eastern Time. After that the servers will all be shut down for 8 hours. So you won't be able to bring anything through until they've done that at 8am Eastern Time. Wildcard have said they're going to allocation of new servers they'll let us know beforehand and they will try and make sure that all current existing game modes are there in some way. So if you play on a hardcore, if you play on a primitive, whatever way the servers are that have been taken down, there should be some sort of similar servers ready for the fresh new batch. I'll be back with more information about all the server options that are available, whether it's rentable, how you're going to cross buy, cross play etc. But let me know what you think about that. Are you an official player and you know all about this? Are you someone brand new and you didn't really have a clue? Are you a single player person? Put your comments down below. This has been Joe Plays Games. This has been the Access Show. You're going to be seeing a lot more of this in-depth looks at early access games. Whether it's issues and problems they've had or whether it's going to be previews or excitement about what's coming. Until next time, I'll see you ratbags later.